Hey Campbell Hawks, we arrived at Pioneer Village in Medina, Nebraska, if I'm saying that right. Pioneer Village. We're here at the campground. We're on site number nine, right here at the end, at 12th and Colorado Avenue. And we're gonna take you on our journey here for two days. Hold the camera sideways. Here we go. I'm Missy. I'm Mike. And we're the Campaholics! Good morning, Campaholics. It is, what is today? It is Thursday, August 11th, 2022. We're at Pioneer Village. Pioneer Village. We're at the Pioneer Village Campground. And this place has, there's no word for it as far as the size of a museum facility of antique farm equipment, antique automobiles, stuff that made this country great. So I, mean, I was even told that there's a two-story building. Well, this matter of fact, this building right here, that green one, is full of Fords. From the very first Ford, all the way current to current Fords or what have you. Anyway, it's a two-story building full of Fords, and to include the very first one. And I was told there's a, an old Buick or a Pontiac, one of the first ones off the line. So it's in here also. This facility, although it is dated uh there's a motel there it's not in service anymore uh this is the campground this is the size of it right here uh i got some tent sites some smaller interior sites and then you got these big pull throughs right here 50 amp full hookup uh i took brought big mo in right there drove right here and came right here so it was easy to navigate easy to get in here no big deal uh, this this town is called uh, Minden, Nebraska. Minden, M-I-N-D-E-N. Now it's forty-five dollars a night to get in here. Forty-five, forty-five or fifty. Anyway, Passport America gets you twenty-five dollars a night if you're a Passport America member. So we pay twenty-five dollars a night, two nights, full hookups for fifty bucks. I'm about to go into this museum. I'm I'm, I'm kind of excited about, it, so I'll take you with me. Here we go. Yeah, parking lot's pretty full. Showing man's progress since 1830. All right, this building houses yesteryear's Fords, bikes, motorcycles, and snowmobiles. Wow, where's the lighting? Nineteen fifteen Ford. Twenty six. Twenty nine. American pickers will lose their mind in this place. It's the, the first snowmobile. It's a 1934 Model A automobile converted with tracks and skis for the first snowmobile. All right, guys, this building house, houses Chevrolets, 
All cars in this row are Chevrolets in the order of development. We're starting with a 1927 Chevrolet. Guys, this is amazing. This is the second floor of this building. The second floor, look at the floors in here. Beautiful. Wow. I just finished these two buildings. I'm almost an hour into it already. Uh, wow. Look at all this going on here. More antique cars. So this building houses Buicks and Cadillacs in order of their development. Wow. And this road's Oldsmobile. And Pontiacs. This is freaking amazing. From the outside, looking into this facility looking at this facility from the roadside you would have no idea the second floor of this building is all dodges yes a 1937 vagabond coach slash camper look at that he sold for 845 dollars Again, this is on the second floor of the Dodge building. And here we got Plymouths and Chryslers. And the history of the parking meter. The traffic light. 1914 traffic light with a controller. You ever seen the side of a Wells Fargo stagecoach? Check this out. This is a coach you want to avoid riding in. Guys, this room is nothing but antique trackers. This building, this two story building. You hear people walking up there. Antique trackers. Wow. So, at the end of this tractor road, are you kidding me? They put trucks upstairs. Let's give it a look. So on the second floor of this building, the second floor is all trucks. A 
Wendell Turner Murder Home, a 1939 model. This thing weighed more than 16,000 pounds and 80 gallons of gasoline. This is a motor home. Somebody made this a motor. It's got a chimney up there. <laughs> wow. Let's take a look inside. It's locked up, but I'll try and get you in there as we hear the train in the background. Aluminum frame windows. See if you can see in there. Look at that. A motor home. This is a 1910 harvester. It's hard to see with all the other equipment around. This harvester was pulled by 27 horses. 27 horses back in the day. Look at this, guys. This is a wall of barbed wire to different braids that were patented through the years. 1881, 1876, the, the different braids of barbed wire patent through the years all right guys i've been in there two hours it's uh actually it's 120 i'm gonna go go home and get some lunch <laughs> i'm hungry all right camp hawks i've had my lunch i'm going back in you see in the windows see all the those are old fords in there model t's more wagons nice bikes but we're going back in for phase two of today's visit. All right, guys, you've seen all the buildings in the back. I've been in all the car buildings, all the tractor buildings, uh, all those type of railroad buildings. In the back behind this church, this is the village. And I'll give you an overall shot of this village. But by the way, the lady took my money at the cash register is cutting grass. What's up with that? First U.S. bathtub, 1842. The very first bathtub in the United States was built in Cincinnati in 1842. Seven foot mahogany box lined with sheet metal. It looked like a watertight coffin. Look at that. Wood with copper. Wood and porcelain. So when we were in York, PA, I saw, I saw this at an ag museum in York, Pennsylvania. But you would have the dog run on the treadmill and to power through via belt a churner or something or a washing machine. In, in this case, this is a washing machine. But here's how it would work: dog would run. K9 power. There, there are buildings all over this compound. Black Hills Pony Express Relay Station. Riders are wanted. Be tough to see, but this is Buffalo Bill's saddle. Here's a Pony Express saddle. Not very comfortable, they said, and you can see why. It's made to throw be thrown on quickly. At each transfer, horse station stop. Take the saddle off, throw it on the new horse, and go.
this is house number eight here. This is called the sod house. This is an example, or it is a sod house built from sods from the Nebraskan Plains. All right, guys, we're going into the Grom schoolhouse somewhere around 1910. This was built. Look at this. Wow. Big old heater in the center of it. Presidents on the wall. School books in the back. Spelling book, how about that? Look at that, look at the desk. The tables, the desk tables will flip up. There's George, chalkboard up there, the teacher's desks. This is dated June something of 1891. There you go. There's your ink wells for your pens. Not sure what that book is. That looks interesting. your maps pull them down there's a little solar system scale the earth the moon the sun this is pretty cool Alright guys, this is an actual government land office. Homestead papers obtained here. This building was actually moved block by block, numbered by numbered, and put back here in this location to uh, exact build. And people would come to this office to state their claim and land, land out as they settled out west. There's a map from 1861, and I know this is going to be very hard to see, but this is all open space up here, Dakota. That's all it says. There's a little bit of Oregon. But you come into this office, there's a surveyor's transit. Come into a government office like this, state your claim, they issue your papers, ownership papers. So can you imagine that? That's how easy it was to stick your claim to a property, go out there, see something you like, come up and claim it. And this is the story of how the War family came together uh, and created all this, this legacy of Pioneer Village. Hmm. All right, the people store, this is the general store. Again, the exact model that was moved to this location. This is going to be dark in here, but hopefully you'll get the gist of it. This is fascinating because I remember walking into one of these stores in uh, my hometown, the town of Lewis, that was preserved. And it looks similar to this. Look at the ladder on a, on a track, on a rail. Fascinating. Reaching across the fence will trigger security alarm. Keep your hands to yourself. Post off boxes, money orders. What's this on the, on the wire right there? A little trolley on the wire. I'm gonna spend for signs or something. Cool. All right, Camp Hawks, it's uh, 3.45 p.m. and I'm finally getting done with all these buildings in the back. I haven't even gone into the main building yet. 3.45 p.m. So I've been here a good five hours looking at all these relics as I had dueling trains in the background. 
So let's go in and check out the main building. I can't believe it's just a little dark in here, but this is Harrow Wharf's 1937 Chris Craft boat. Look at this. It was called the Valhalla. How cool is that? Look at that. Look at that rod. <laughs> Look at that spin, spin them. Wow. And here. And what's interesting about his his boat, the Valhalla, it was actually used by the Coast Guard, commandeered, I guess, by the Coast Guard during World War II to patrol the Gulf. And there's this picture is of the big Valhalla when used by the government during World War II for patrol. It's by the U.S. Coast Guard. And there's the bathroom. Get a hill. It's a bedroom. Here's his kitchen. How cool is that? Dinette, couch or bench seat. Nineteen thirty-seven, Chris Craft, Valhalla vessel. This is log book. How cool is that, man? How would you love to have one of these things? Fix it up, restore it, and sail. Of a, had a pair of 134 it had a pair of 130 horsepower Chris Craft engines and there was his boat the exterior part of it yeah used by the Bahala sinks the, its first German submarine during World War II look at that he's got planes helicopters in here A folding boat, bolt folds in half for portability. Airplane engines, trolleys. Fire equipment. Wow. The first jet airplane. Jet fighter, put it that way. We won't have to give this props. This is better than the Smithsonian. Here in Minden, Nebraska. All right, Kevin Hawks, the day is done. It is 4.50 p.m. I have spent six hours, six hours in that facility. Fascinating. I told the ladies it was better than the Smithsonian. What an experience that was. So 15 bucks to get in, that's all it was. $15 a person. And if you stay at the campground, you get one free ticket to get in. If you pay full price at the campground, not the Passport America price. But fascinating, I loved it. Hey, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video. If you're in the neighborhood, it's about 12 miles off of I-80 here in Menden, Nebraska. Pioneer Village Campground and Museum. Pioneer Village Museum. Great experience. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.